scaling system that lets you reach into the world to grab objects, change them, uh, and then ultimately print them in 3D. So Scott has this pair of cursors that lets him reach in and just grab objects, move them around. He can grab them in either hand, both hands. And if he grabs an object with both hands, he can stretch it and rotate it. There are lots of other ways of doing that. You can do that with one hand or two hands. At least the rotation part. And there's a CAD engine, a professional CAD engine built in to make the arc. And that makes it so that you can do all the things you can do in a CAD system, but it's just presented through a natural user interface. So you can see he's just designated one object as the cutter, the other object is the one to be cut. And it accurately, precisely, and correctly makes every cut. The booleans are uh, absolutely spot on every time. Fantastic. And presumably you can 3D print this now. Now you can just send that directly out or maybe uh, focus in on the, uh, uh, the turtle. And then this was designed using... Oh, wow. Okay. So one of our interns just built this. He's, uh, he was building some very, very complex things, and I asked him to dial it back a couple of notches <laughs> and so do something playful. How long would something of like this have taken to design using using this system? This took uh, Tom a couple of hours. Just okay. Around with it. Uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, we're going to restart. We'll restart after this. But let me show you. Uh, as long as we're on the subject, something that uh, Tom, one of our interns, made as his very first object in Make the Art. Okay. Um, kind of uh, speaks to the, the ease of use and the uh, uh, the learning curve is very short with Make the Art. It's a little bit like learning to ride a bike. You learn how to move around in the world. You learn just a couple of tools, and now you're ready to start making objects. So it's a very concrete and direct style of interaction. So it's very intuitive, you'd say? It's very intuitive. Uh, the, again, he, this guy's an artist. He, uh, uh, he studied a, a 2D uh, discipline, compositing, at the Academy in San Francisco. Uh, he played around with Make VR for three or four hours one day. Then he came in and started building this. This is the first thing he had ever built. He's not a modeler, he's a 2D artist. Okay. And put this together. I came in after the first day and saw the legs and thought, wow, this seems to be going someplace. And he said, keep it up. And within another day and a half, this is what he had built. Oh, that's amazing. Take a look under the chin of this guy. You can see the, just the, the raw detail. <laughs> We started doing sweeps just to put in that piping or electrical, I'm not sure what it is, but it has a real personality. Everything that he's built has just been amazing. Maybe uh, uh, kill this and bring in the gargoyle. So you'll see why I said I asked him to dial it back a little bit. Sure, sure, sure. Do something that people feel like they can make. I'd be interested to uh, unleash him and see what he could produce. If you just say, just make anything you want. Yeah. He has done that. This is this is something he suggested. So a gargoyle. And I honestly told him, I don't think you can do that, Tom. You know, <laughs> I don't think a gargoyle is the right thing for this. And he just proceeded to make this. This went through many iterations. It used to have, uh, at one point, a solid chest, you know, kind of a muscled chest. And then he went to this uh, kind of skeleton, this ribcage view. But He's, it's just amazing to watch him work. He's very quick, uh, and he uses uh, primitives like a uh, cylinder. He'll stretch it in one direction and then cut little slivers out of it, and those are his primitives, his new primitives to work with. So how long will it be before we can get our hands on one of these? Uh, we are, we'll be kickstarting uh, before the end of the year, make VR, soon after the uh, STEM system kickstarter. And this is the reason we can go directly out from make VR to STL and then just print these things in 3D. Uh, a very clean, uh, a very clean and well behaved uh, mesh means that with very little repair, you just send it out to the printer and get what you expect. What, what do the 
spaceship. The spaceship. Oh wow, you have a little universe going on. Oh yeah, the spaceship is made in complete. This is made in a complete precision tools. Every piece here is perfectly assembled. This is a concept called uh, kit bashing. I don't know if you remember kit bashing. Maybe no, no. Uh, you would take a Revell model and an Aurora model, and you take the plastic parts and cut them up. Okay, okay, okay. So this is digital kit bashing, where uh, you go out to a, a free site like GrabCat, tens of thousands of great to, models. Go back to Y. And you just bring those models in, cut them up, glue them together, and now you've got a spaceship like this, a just crazy knife and gatling gun uh, spaceship. A kid that made that, you know, he, he went out there to the internet, he grabbed a bunch of models that anybody made for, for, for different purposes, took it in to make VR, cut it and sliced it and assembled it together and, and you got a spaceship. The turtle was made all from from within from modeling within make VR. As was the MacBot and as was the MacBot and all. But it's different ways that people can do. Get him the iPhone that my daughter made. The iPhone case. Yeah, go go back to look at the, an 11 year old so so in, in in this tablet that you have the virtual tablet we give you a different models that 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 you can as a start so for example an iphone 4s my daughter received for her 11th birthday so she wanted so we we brought in an iphone 4 case and she just within 15 minutes made it what she calls a swiss cheese case <laughs> And you can see why. Exactly. Yeah. Why. And that's her idea. And, and, and all the you know the girls from her from her uh, you know sixth grade class loved it. And the point is, show show exactly how you do it. Take another color, another color. She took a sphere. Take the the the, the yeah. yeah. Take this one. See? This is how simple it is. You identify which one you want to cut from and what you want to cut with. Right there, make it smaller, make it smaller now. You know, that's yeah. bring some uh, the flower one and bring some more. So she brought a bunch of her uh, school boys and girls, and we let them just go crazy and gave them each an iPhone case, and then they just send it to a to a 3D print. Mm -hmm. You know, we send to Shapeways, Shapeways sent back a print. Look at this, another girl made that. And go, go go closer to it, so so we can see the 3D the 3D side of it. That's one of uh, the boys made that. Look at this. Look, and you know how easy it is for them to make. And then they print it, and then they got something nobody else has. And for them, it's it's all about personalizing, you know. And as long as we're at it, we should probably bring in my case. Yeah, don't bring his case. Yeah, no, do bring him. Yeah. Please don't. Beautiful. It's way over engineered. <laughs> but the, the uh, cheese case, we printed in yellow plastic and everybody wanted Even it. our engineers start wearing, putting it on their phones. Our industrial okay. designer. Our industrial designer has this one. You know, he designed some crazy ones, but this is the one that he wanted to put on. Scott, I know you're getting mixed messages, but you really should bring it. Yeah, you should bring it. Just bring it to show why we shouldn't bring it. I feel excited now. I want to see Trust it. me. You'll see. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. Go into it. See, he's got a whole city block in the inside of his iPhone. And it's okay to tell me how beautiful that is. And it's okay to tell the truth also. <laughs> and do you use this? I don't. I have no, no, no okay, this. okay. This is not practical because he, no, built, no, no. he built it on the inside, right? So yeah. show the inside for a second. Okay. It's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, actually, no, it's, it's clean. It's actually you clean. It's right. It's happened. right. It's clean. I didn't think it's clean. I didn't. I thought very careful. Uh, okay. I didn't think so. But you know, it's a little wild. You know, and in 3D print, having all these teeth is going to catch your clothes. It's, you know, these are really practical people actually using these. But Paul is an artist, so that's what happens. It's not about being functional. It's about being. You know, yeah. Oh, that's 
That's a teenager, a senior in high school, going to Berkeley Engineering School, made that, and you can see why. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's all precision, and you got the pie, and you got... And it's actually very funny to watch a mirror and make your own. Yeah. spend hours. I can spend hours. He goes on what he calls a creative and that's, journey. And, and, and did you explain him, an did you explain him why you made it so you can spend in the rift so much time? No, we haven't talked about that yet. So let's take a look at the uh, viewpoint. Yeah, go to the viewpoint to explain that. So you can see Scott has the old Scott has these two cursors that he can move around in space. So he just grabs the world in a kind of a 3D multi-touch. So he just grabs the world and swipes the whole world the way you would uh, an image on your iPhone. Uh, if he grabs with both hands, he can rotate. There he is just rotating around the world. And if he grabs with both hands and stretches the world, he can scale into anything and look at it very close up. Uh, when you wear the Oculus Rift, there, there's a, a danger of, of nausea because if you're using a mouse to drive your viewpoint through the scene, you see yourself moving through the scene, but you don't feel like you're moving through the scene, and that discrepancy causes you to get sick. Of course. In Make VR, it's a different paradigm that uh, circumvents nausea. So you actually are grabbing the world as if it was an object and pushing it. Mm -hmm. And you have no more expectation in your inner ear when you grab an object and move it uh, sure. than, than you would if you were grabbing a coffee cup. Sure. So if you grab the world and move it, you just don't feel anything. So what sort of processing power do you need to actually do this? Can you do this with a normal graphics card or do you uh, need special any, equipment? Uh, uh, gaming uh, PC or uh, desktop, going back two or three generations of graphics will run this. So uh, we're running on this uh, shuttle over here with a 580 in it, but that's really overkill. Okay, okay. We made this one so we could take it on planes too. Of course. Uh, but it definitely is not a uh, an exotic uh, system that's required for it. Okay, so this is quite accessible then to, to any home user. And the price of Make VR when it's uh, Kickstarter will be uh, quite low as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet.